Welcome to this video in the electrochemistry topic. We're going to look in this particular video on the different types of half cell that we can have. And we want to know the standard conditions that each of these operate under in order to measure these standard electrode potentials. So let's just start off with the simplest type of half cell, which we're quite familiar with if you've been watching the videos from the beginning, which is these metal metal ion half cells. And in these half cells, we've typically got an electrode made out of a particular metal. Uh, in this case, it's a, a copper um, piece of copper that's acting as the electrode. And essentially, remember what the electrode is doing is it is um, acting as a conductor of electrons to connect with an external circuit. an external circuit. So we need some object which will carry the electrons to and from the electrode in the operation of the cell. That's what the electrode is. And in this case, because there's a metal involved in the redox equilibrium, uh, we can simply just use that metal as the electrode. Now in every single one of these cells, what you'll notice is that there is all the components of the redox equilibrium are present. So in this case, we've accounted for the copper. We need a solution then that contains copper 2 plus ions and the concentration, concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. And that's the standard concentration that you'll need to make sure that you know, one mole per decimeter cubed. Um, and we can get that, for example, um, and that's this solution here. So for example, we might want to use copper sulfate solution. And the reason for that, we could use copper nitrate or something like that. And we just want a counter ion that will, uh, will be a readily soluble salt of copper. So it will release all the copper two plus ions into solution. And we want the counter ion to be fairly unreactive. Well, very unreactive. Now all these cells are gonna operate under the same standard temperature which is 298 Kelvin, so 25 degrees C, a sort of room temperature. Now, we may want to, instead of uh, having a metal and a metal ion, have something a bit like this, where we've actually got a gas, chlorine, and an ion of the gas that's being formed. So again, we need the same type of thing. We need both chlorine supplied, this time as a gas, um, and we're gonna have that at a pressure of one atmosphere. This time it's chlorine, so gas is present. And that's usually piped in here, and then we have this sort of glass shield. Sometimes it, well, there's usually holes here to allow the gas to bubble out into the solution. So you'll often, sometimes in diagrams, see this type of thing coming out because there'll be some holes there. The so gas is being supplied through a pipe here. And in the solution, we're going to need some Cl minus ions. So we need Cl minus at a concentration again of one mole per decimeter cubed. That's the standard concentration for these solutions. Now, the electrons produced here have got to be able to get out to an external circuit, so we need an electrode. Neither chlorine nor chloride ions are a suitable electrode because neither of them conduct electrons. And therefore what we need is an inert electrode, which is just going to act for, as a place for the electrons to stay if we've got a very high resistance voltmeter connected, or for the electrons to travel up it to the external circuit. Um, and our choice for the electrode, if in doubt, is always platinum. Platinum chemical symbol PT, um, and so we've got a platinum wire coming down here, and then we've always at the bottom here with a porous platinum end, and this is what we sometimes call platinum black. So this porous platinum end here, we can find just down the bottom. Here, and that's just to ensure rapid equilibration for measurement of standard electrode potentials. Again, the temperature of this cell, standard conditions necessitate a 298K 
temperature. And the third type, final type of uh, half cell we'll look at here is if we've got two ions involved in the redox equilibrium. So for example, in this case, we've got an ion 3 plus uh, gaining an electron and forming ion 2 plus, and this is the equilibrium we've got. So this time we've got two reagents that are in the same phase, so they're both going to be in the solution. So we need both Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus in the solution. So we could have chosen perhaps a sulfate of iron 2 and a sulfate of iron 3 plus. Um, it doesn't matter too much, um, but we've got both of these present in the solution. And in this case, we could either have both at one mole per decimeter cubed. But sometimes for technical reasons it might not be possible to make all uh, ions present at such a high concentration or we've got to have equal concentration. And this is known as equimolar solution. So it's sufficient to have equal concentration. Because if you think about it, they're both present at one mole per decimeter cubed. If they're both present at a half a mole per decimeter cubed, it doesn't affect the position of the equilibrium. As long as they're present in equal amounts, or equal concentrations, it won't affect the position of the equilibrium. So equimolar solutions are sufficient in these ion-ion half cells. Again, neither of these is a conductor, so we're going to need a platinum electrode platinum electrode and we've got this porous platinum at the bottom here, the platinum black. Usually it's just sufficient to say a platinum electrode and the platinum black is assumed. And finally a 298k temperature as before. Now one for you to try. What apparatus and conditions would be needed to measure the standard electrode potential for the following reaction? So pause the video and see if you can work that out. Okay, so what are we going to need? Well, first thing just to see is that we've got aqueous solutions here. So we're going to have solutions. And what are the aqueous substances that we're going to have to have in our solutions? Well, we need some manganate ions. Minus. Probably from something like potassium manganate. So we're going to need MnO4 minus. We're also going to need H plus. maybe from hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, and we're going to need Mn2+. Again, perhaps a sulfate or a chloride, it depends on the solubility. You want a highly soluble um, Mn2 plus salt. And remember that we want these in equimolar concentrations, so whatever we can get. And that's just an important thing to note here, is that even though there are eight H pluses in this equation, we still go for equimolar solutions. We don't take account of the stoichiometry of the reaction here. The other thing we've not included is the water. And that's for the same reason that uh, um, mentioned when we're looking at different conditions in these redox equilibria. Um, solids and liquids don't take part um, in, the, in the equilibrium, at least their concentrations don't change. Um, and there is, in fact, so much water around anyway that we don't need to include water. There's always going to be enough water around. Now, in addition, we need an electrode. And that's going to have to be a platinum electrode because there's nothing else here that could act as a conductor. And we need a temperature of 298 Kelvin. So, in summary, we need all the species involved in a redox equilibrium to be present in order to measure the half cell potential. If we want to make it a standard half cell potential, we need standard concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed for everything in solution. A standard pressure for gases is one atmosphere, and a standard temperature for everything is 298 Kelvin. If a metal is not present in the half cell, you should use a platinum electrode. And if several species are present in solutions, then it's equivalent to have, it's okay to have equimolar concentration, so same molarity, same mole concentration present. That's okay if you can't find solutions as concentrated as one mole per decimeter cubed.